I'm glad that you're here celebrating, remembering this wonderful day of love that you have promised, that you have manifested 25 years ago. I hope in these 25 years, both of you didn't become bored with each other. But what more can I say? The fact that you have been happily getting along the past 25 years is a great testament of your love for each other. Usually, when I get the chance of celebrating wedding anniversaries, I always ask the couple, what is your secret? I ask this question not because I also want to get married, but it's not that. <laughs> I have been a priest for less than three years now. And uh, I always want to know, what is the secret of the longevity of the relationship between husbands and wives who live for, I don't know, 25 years, 50 years, so that I may learn something from them and apply it to my priestly vocation and my ministry. I think the sisters here should also ask the same question. What is the secret? in keeping yourselves in love for 25 years? This is a rhetorical question, so you may give your answers to them uh, after, after the celebration or later. Another question. Do you still remember the day that you first met? Hmm? You are younger, I suppose, like all of us. <laughs> Do you still remember the day that you consecrated your love in Christ, the day of your wedding? I can only imagine how handsome was Anton and how beautiful was she. I'm not saying that both of you are, are no longer beautiful and handsome. What I'm saying is, it is essential, even for us consecrated persons, to remember and from time to time make a memorial of that beautiful day just like what we are doing right now. It is because in life, we need to be motivated to move on and go on stronger than ever, inspired by the beautiful and inspiring things that we choose. Especially those beautiful memories that signed us up for life and made us who we are now. This experience is like the Eucharistic celebration the memorial of Christ's ultimate sacrifice for his love to mankind. We repeat this celebration every Sunday or every day for us consecrated persons. Every day we celebrate the Mass to remember this great love of God that pushes us to be witnesses of that same love. Just like remembering the day you first met and the day of your wedding, those memories which inspire you to move on, to mature as persons, to become more deeply in love with each other, even though some wrinkles have already appeared in our faces. Because those things, time will true. Those things fade. What remain are the joyful memories of your love for each other. Do you know that on the day of your wedding, you were tied to love with another person? It was not only just both of you who were there on that day. You were tied, you were free, in fact. And do you know who the other person is? It's Jesus Christ. It was not just the two of you who promised perpetual love the day you were married. There were three persons involved the both of you and Christ, so that your love may not remain solely a human endeavor. With Christ, love becomes a divine act. Thus, your love for each other may become the love of Christ which manifests in the witness of the faith in your lives, helping each other grow, in helping others grow in supporting each other, in the support you give to others, in bringing out the best of each other, in inspiring others to become their best. 
in the gospel that we have read, that you listen to. There was a question of this man. How do I become perfect? How do I become perfect? It is not only through obedience that we become good Christians. It is not only through obedience that we become good wives or husbands. Although it is true, to become a good husband, you will always obey your wife. We say this truth as consecrated persons. In order to become good consecrated persons, we must obey. But it is not only through obedience that we become perfect. It is through total self-giving. And that is love. Love is the total gift of oneself to the other person. And I think that you are doing it for 25 years now. And the last thing that I would say to you is this. And for the truth, I was asking at the start of the whole week, what more can I say to both of you? I really feel that I'm not the right person who should give you marital advices. But what I, what I can say to you is this. Allow yourselves to become Christ to one another. That is, Anto, always try to be an instrument of Christ's salvation to your wife, Karen. And Karen, may you always become Christ's salvation to Anto. And this is our vocation. I hope that in this celebration, we would really celebrate love, life, and salvation. And as we continue this celebration, we ask God for strength. We ask God for joy. And we ask God that we may become good witnesses of His love and His salvation. My dear friends, through the sacrament of matrimony, you join your lives in an unbreakable bond that you now intend to renew before the Lord. Turn to the Lord in prayer, and these vows may be strengthened by divine grace. Blessed are you, Lord, for among your goodness I took.
Increase and sanctify, O Lord, the love of your servants, who once gave each other these strengths as a sign of faithfulness, that they may always grow in the grace of the sacrament. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us call upon the mercy of God, the Almighty Father, who is in His most provident plan will that the history of salvation be signed in marital love and fidelity. We pray, renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who are called faithful, requiring and rewarding the observance of your covenant, be pleased to fill with your blessings as your servants, who celebrate the blessing of their commitment to marriage, we pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit enjoy from eternity perfect oneness of life and communion of love, grant that these your servants may always remember and faithfully keep the covenant of love they made in the sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who in your providence order all the experiences of human life so as to lead the faithful to share in the mystery of Christ, Grant that these your servants, serenely accepting both good times and bad, may strive to cling to Christ in life and live for Him alone. We pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. Holy Father, who willed that the partnership of marriage should be an example of Christian living, grant that all married couples may be witnesses in the world to the mystery of your Son's love. We pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. For Anton and Carmen, that they may keep their hearts united forever and may their home be full of joy and laughter. May God give them good health and may they always find happiness in each other. We pray to the Lord. Renew the fidelity of your servants, Lord. O God, whose plan, family, 
life has its form on firm foundation. Hear with compassion the prayers of your servants and grant that following the example of the Holy Family, they may praise you without end in the joy of your house. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> and sisters that, are, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty and Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and yours for the grace and glory of His name. For our good
be our friends. Amen. May He free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in His love. Amen. Amen. So that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son. And the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.